In today's video, I'm going to share with you how you can create patterns within Midjourney that you can potentially create composition notebooks around. Now, what I'm going to do is share with you some of the patterns that I created here within Midjourney. Then I'm going to share with you and show you what they look like turned into a composition notebook cover. Then nearer the end of the video, I'm going to give you some tips for creating your own patterns. Now, when it comes to Midjourney, there's so many different things that you can create. Now, over the past few weeks, I've spoken about creating colouring pages. Now, what I'll do is link one of those videos right there, right now, in the right-hand corner of the screen and on a card. So you can go through and see what's now possible when creating colouring pages with Midjourney. So colouring pages is just one thing that you can create patterns being another. So let's go ahead and take a look at these to see what they look like. Now these first ones I've got up just here are little cute baby lions. So it's lions, flowers, leaves, and they actually look pretty good. Now they're not perfect, but they are looking pretty good. If we scroll down to here, we have some cabins, wood cabins, in a forest with some mountains and snow and it being winter then we have just here some celestial sun and moons and i actually thought that these look pretty good now i did turn one of these into a composition notebook cover as well which you're going to see in a second now if we come down to here we have some woodland animals now these didn't come out perfect at all i found when you're trying to do multiple different things that mid journey really struggles with that but if you keep doing variations and refine your prompts you can get some pretty good results so these were looking okay they're not the best but if we come down to here we have some cows and daisies and i just thought these turned out really good as well then we also have some pigs and daisies and i turned one of these into a composition notebook cover as well which you're going to see in a second then we have some hedgehogs these turned out pretty well as well i was just playing around with some animals farmyard animals with flowers and things like that now if we come down to here i started creating some hearts because obviously valentine's is coming up within a couple of months that's the next big holiday for kdp but again these are watercolor hearts and they look pretty good these are like funny little hearts which also look good and then we have some gardening stuff just here now i wanted to share with you and show you these just because so you can see what you can actually create because there's so many different styles and there's so many different things that you can create and they all look pretty good as we can see just here. Now let's scroll back up to the top to round about here and now let's go over to Canva where I created some composition notebook covers out of those patterns which I just showed you. Now, one thing that you don't want to do is just create an image like this, take this image, slap it on a book, and then try and sell that. You still have to do a bit of formatting and format the patterns ready for print, so just remember that as well. But I will have a video coming out over the next couple of weeks. It is going to come out after Christmas now, as Christmas is at the weekend, but I will have a video all about formatting the pages that you create within Midjourney. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at these because I just think that these look really good, especially this hedgehog one just here. We have three different hedgehogs. We also have some daisies just here and some leaves. So again, this just looks really nice and it looks really professional. Now, in my opinion, it looks like that you'd never guess in a million years that this was created by AI. And that's the way that things are going. You're not going to be able to tell the difference between AI art and human art, normal art, further down the line. And we're getting pretty close to that already. But nonetheless, this cover looks pretty good. This is hedgehogs, floral, daisies, and things like that. Then this one as well, I really liked this pig one with the flowers right there on their head as well. And again, I just think this looks good. Now, once this page has been formatted, ready 
for print, what I like to do is just copy this, paste it. Let's just take away this one so you can see. Then I move it over and then I flip this around as well. This way is kind of alternating and it looks good on the finished product. Now let's move that back up to there. Let's move that to round about there, push it to the back, maybe over a little bit more to round about there. But that's what I like to do when doing my covers. But again, this one looks pretty good as well. Now, one thing I do want to note really quick, and that is if you are interested in creating composition notebooks, then we do have quite a few different videos on the channel about creating them. Now, what I'll do is link my most popular composition notebook video right there, right now in the right hand corner so you can go through and watch. Anyway, that one looks pretty good. So that's hedgehogs, pigs. Then we have the hearts as well. I just thought this looked really good as well. Once they're formatted and turned into composition notebooks, they all look pretty good. Then we have this one, which is gardening. Now, the only problem with this one was this little cactus thing just here. Apart from that, everything looks pretty good. We have some leaves here, flowers. We have a watering can. We have another one here, more cactuses. So this is just a standard gardening type composition notebook but nonetheless looks pretty good then we have this celestial one as well which again i just thought looked pretty good now these are supposed to be patterns but realistically they're actually not now let's head on over to mid journey so i can explain a little bit more then give you some tips on creating your own patterns now the proper way to do patterns within mid journey is using the term dash dash tile. Now, if you use this, then it is going to create you a proper seamless pattern. The only problem is that dash dash tile is not yet compatible with the version four of mid journey. So if you try and use dash dash tile to create a proper seamless pattern, then you can only use it on the previous versions of mid journey because mid journey version four does not currently yet work with dash dash tile. Now to get away or get around this, you can use some different keywords, which will help you create seamless patterns. But remember, they're not actually seamless patterns, but they do look pretty good. So with me personally, I just can't wait until the dash dash tile just here is compatible with mid journey version four because then you're going to be able to create some really nice patterns now with that being said let me just go over my settings really quick here within mid journey because this is what my settings tend to stay on the majority of the time now to get this up in mid journey all you want to do is forward slash and then go to settings just there then it's going to pull up all these settings just here now with me i always have it on mid journey version 4 these are the previous ones then i have it on base quality so i know people have it on half quality or high quality i like to have base quality and then the style i always have on medium as well you can play around with style low style high and style very high but again i just have mine on style medium then i just have regular upscale and then the majority of the time i have it on fast mode just because i like to do things fairly quick but they're the settings that i have but now let me go ahead and show you how to create your own patterns here within mid journey so there's only going to be one long tail keyword that you really need and then you can craft your prompts around this long tail keyword now what is that well if we put forward slash i let's go to imagine and then put in the keyword the long tail keyword which is just this and that is seamless tile repeat pattern of that's all you need and then all you need to do is describe exactly what you want so let's go ahead and do a little bit of this so we're going to do seamless tile repeat pattern of and let's do something like jungle animals then we're going to do dash dash two no we're going to do dash dash ar because that's aspect ratio then we're going to do two 
by three because that's the perfect aspect ratio if you're going to create 8.5 times 11s. Now from here, let's go ahead and let's just click enter and see what we get because I have spoken about this in previous videos, but you want to build your page from the ground up. So we're going to start off really simple and just use seamless tile repeat pattern. That's the main keyword that you want to use. And then we're going to start building on top of that using jungle animals. Now, what I'm going to do is just pause the video for a second, just to make this a little bit quicker. So there we go. That's the first image. We've kept it really simple because we're going to build on top of that. Remember, seamless tile repeat pattern of and that's all you want to start with. Now, ideally, you want to come up with your own creations. Don't stop experimenting or learning about crafting your own prompts because the better you get at crafting your own prompts, the better results that you're going to get as well. So take what you learn from this video, but then build and learn upon that. Anyway, let's take a look at this seamless tile pattern or seamless tile repeat pattern of jungle animals. Now, if we take a quick look at this, this is looking okay, but it's not the style that I want. I want more of a cartoon character style, and I want just a few leaves and some flowers in there as well. So now what I would do is take this and start building on top of that. So we're going to take that, we're going to go to imagine, we're going to go to paste, put that in, and now we're going to start building. So seamless tile repeat pattern of jungle animals. Animals. I want some leaves. I also want some type of jungle plant. Let's go over to Google and type biggest. Let's do that again. Biggest jungles in the world. Now from here we can take a look at some of the biggest jungles. So the biggest one by far is going to be the Amazon rainforest. So what we could do here is take the Amazon rainforest, go back over to Google again, type that and put plants. Then from here, we could take a look at all the different plants in the Amazon rainforest. And then we could craft our prompts around that. Now for this instance, I'm just going to keep it very simple, but I just wanted to show you that you can do things like that as well. And that will really make your designs stand out. But anyway, we have seamless tile repeat pattern of jungle animals, leaves. I want some flowers as well. So we could do flowers and then we're going to click enter. Now from here, we're going to see what this image looks like as well and see what we can build upon that to make it look better. Now again, I'm just going to pause the video for one second. And there we go. So this is going in the direction which I don't want it to go. Now I do want these types of leaves and I do want some jungle animals, but the style isn't what I want. So now what we're going to do is take this. Let's take that. Let's go down to here. Let's click imagine. Let's paste that. And now I want some type of style. So let's go with kawaii style characters and now we're going to click enter from here and just give that a few seconds to do its thing as well but this is what i mean by building your image from the ground up you can always start with something simple and then add keywords as needed so to begin with we had seamless tile repeat pattern of jungle animals it's looking okay but then we add leaves and flowers now there's already leaves and flowers in this one but i want to be very specific so mid journey knows exactly what i want so then we got this image just here which i kind of like but it's not the style that we're going for so we've now added kawaii style characters so again let's just give this a second to do its thing as well and there we go. Now we can see just by adding kawaii style characters, the design is completely different from this one. And it's heading in the direction which I want. So now let's go ahead and take a look at these. Some of these are actually looking pretty good. Now what I actually want is the eyes to be a bit bigger and I want a bit of a bigger smile. So let's go ahead and take this going to copy we're going to go to here we're going to go to imagine now we're going to add some extra keywords so we have leaves flowers and kawaii style characters so here after the animals i'm going to put big cute kawaii 
eyes. Big, smile, and then we're going to have the leaves, the flowers, and kawaii style characters. So now let's click this and see what we get. Again, I'm just going to pause the video for one second. And there we go. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. So some of these look a little bit off, like this just here with the four eyes, but the rest of that looks pretty good. Now, if you made variations on that with V2 just here, no, with V1, which is going to be this image just here, you could probably make variations and those eyes, those double eyes, would get phased out. But look at this one. I really like this one down here. This is number four. So when I start getting images or designs that I actually like, I'll start making variations. So I could make variations on this four, or what I could even do is just redo the whole thing just there. Now, if we go back up to the top to this one just here, I also quite like this one. It's not got the big eyes that I like, but I really like the design. Uh, not the design, the design. So from here, what I could do is make variations on that as well, or upscale it and then make variations. But nonetheless, let's just carry on with these ones down here so we can take a quick look. I'm just going to give that one second to do its thing. That one's almost done. So I'm just going to pause the video for one last time. And there we go. So let's take a look at this one, see what they actually look like. Oh, I really like that one. That one looks a little bit funny, but nonetheless looks good. Really like this one as well, but that looks a little bit funny. So you would have to make variations. This one looks really good as well. Now let's have, take a look at this one. This was the variations on number four just there. And this bottom one was the redo. But if we take a look at the variations, we can see what they look like. And they actually look really good. So I'm going to go with, let's just take... Not that one, because those eyes look a bit weird. This one looks okay. Let's go with that number one. So we're going to upscale number one. Let's take a look just here as well. So from here, I quite like this number four. The arms look a little bit funny there as well. So in fact, let's just go with number one. And let's just let that do its thing and upscale them as well. And there we go. Now, if we take a look at this one, we can see it doesn't quite look right with this just here. And again, if you started making variations on that, then you could phase that out to make it look a lot better. But that one doesn't quite look right. But if we take a look at this one, this actually looks really good. And this would probably look really good as a composition notebook cover. But that's kind of the process on how you build an image. If we go back up to the top to just here, we started with seamless tile repeat pattern of jungle animals. And then we started building on top of that prompt. And this is what we ended up with down here. So again, just remember that you actually build your pages from the ground up and you always want to stick to the same type of format. So right here, we have what it is, which is a seamless tile repeat pattern. Then we have a description of what we want, which is jungle animals. And then we have some descriptive keywords as well. So if you stick to that, try out seamless tile repeat pattern of, and then just see what you can start creating. But remember, these aren't proper seamless patterns. The real way to do it is by doing dash dash tile. But again, remember that this isn't actually compatible with V4 just yet. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Also, go hit subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you can be notified for any further videos. That being said, I've been Paddy, this has been Stacking Profit, and I'll see you again soon.